Hello everyone. My name is Anil Prasad. I am going to take the course Electronic Circuits and Analysis 1, which is in the second year first semester. Okay. The prerequisites for this course are principles of electrical engineering, which you might have studied in your first year first semester. There are two textbooks that are prescribed for this course, and at the end of each textbook, the units are mentioned which are covered in that textbook. There are two references that are also mentioned, which you can refer as and when it is required. And the lesson objectives for today's class is introduction followed by course objectives, course outcomes and summary. In the introduction, I'll be letting you to know what is this course is all about and what is the importance of this course. And I'll let you know some important terms that are being frequently used during this course of study. Okay, so let's begin. What do you learn in this course? Okay, this course is about electronic devices and circuits and their analysis. What is all that we are going to learn in this course is we will be studying about electronic devices and circuits and their analysis. Why this course? What is the importance of this course? Having learned the concept of these devices and circuits where they are applicable. In any type of communication, maybe from one to many or many to many, any sort of communication, it need to be happened, then we need to use these devices and circuits. You might have heard the word communication system. The communication system is normally held for performing communication and it is normally equipped with these devices and circuits. So having learned these concepts of devices and circuits will help us when we are working towards these communications. As I mentioned earlier that we will be studying some important terms that will be very frequently used during the course of time. One is devices. Okay. Any device is a building block for a circuit. Any device is a building block for a circuit. What are the examples for the devices? Maybe resistor, capacitor, inductor, diode, LED, BJT and an integrated circuit etc. All these are examples for devices. Let me show you some of the pictures for these kind of devices. I hope you can identify <coughs> the devices. Okay, so this is a resistor. This is a capacitor. This is an inductor. This is a diode and this is an LED and this is a 9 volts battery DC battery. This is a relay. This is an integrated circuit and this is also an integrated circuit, but a transistor in IC form. Okay. The next element is circuits. So any circuit is a meaningful interconnection of devices to perform a specific function. In the last slide, we have seen what are all the devices. So a meaningful interconnection of devices to perform a specific function is what is called circuit. Let me draw a circuit for you. Let this element be R and let this element be C capacitor. I would like to apply the input in between these two terminals and let us denote that with VI of T. And I'll take the output in between these two terminals and denote with V naught of T. So this is a simple example for a circuit. Okay. I was taking the output across the capacitor. Right. Next is a model. The next term that we have to be very much aware of is a model. Okay. A device model refers to the mathematical model that closely approximates the actual behavior of device to enable calculations and circuit analysis. Okay. Model means in general it refers a circuit model. Okay. For example, let us consider a BJT, a device. You might have studied the BJT, which is a bipolar junction transistor. Here it is uh, taken an NPN transistor. So uh, it is visible to you. And uh, suppose you consider a circuit. What is a circuit? Interconnection of devices. 
so if your circuit is consisting of two or more this kind of devices then if you are asked to analyze that circuit what we need to do normally if we don't have a mathematical model for this kind of devices we have to go to that particular laboratory and we need to connect all those uh, components which are present in the circuit and we need to look for what is the circuit is giving the output okay but it is a very difficult all the time going to the lab and doing experiments for finding out what is the output of the circuit right so unlike that if we have a model mathematical model for representing the device such that that model is very closely approximating the actual behavior of the device then we need not go to the lab for understanding what is the output given by the circuit but instead we can replace this device with its mathematical model and we can go ahead with the circuit analysis okay so the model for this uh, device bjt is going to look something like this though it is looking complicated don't worry too much about that what i mean is in between base and the emitter okay it is being replaced with a resistor in the model okay in between collector and the emitter it is being replaced with a dependent current source so that's all so whenever i see in my circuit a device like bjt i will be replacing that bjt with this model okay this is what is called as mathematical model for the device so that this model is very closely representing the actual behavior of the device that we have considered okay okay so the next important term is system system it consists of circuits devices circuits is nothing but interconnection of devices but what type of devices are present in the system means not only electrical system say electrical devices but also non electrical and sometimes interface devices okay so the basic function of a system is it processes the input to give desired output okay so let me consider a rectangular box uh, so that i'll treat it as a system for you okay so let me consider a rectangular box and i'll call this as a system and for the system there will be an input let it be x of t and similarly there will be an output let it be y of t okay so x of t is the input y of t is the output sometimes the input to the system is called as excitation and the output of the system is called as response okay input to the system is called excitation output to the system is called response okay let us consider a public addressing system this is how a public addressing system is going to look like okay so i could see an amplifier i could see an amplifier to which the input is x of t and the output is y of t okay and the input is a microphone here you can see the picture that input is a microphone microphone is basically a transducer okay microphone is basically a transducer what is a transducer it converts one form of energy to another form in particular here microphone converts sound energy into an electrical energy okay when we speak through a microphone it converts the sound energy into an electrical energy but the signal coming out of this microphone is very weak in strength that is why it is being given to the amplifier as the input now the amplifier is going to increase the strength of this particular signal and uh, it will be now ready to drive the output so here the output is a speaker okay here the output is a speaker again the speaker is also a transducer okay but this time the role of speaker is to convert electrical signal into the sound signal okay so at the input there is a transducer at the output there is a transducer but the role played at the input and output is different at the input transducer is converting sound energy into the electrical energy at the output speaker is converting electrical energy into the sound energy okay so this is a basic public addressing system what we will see in general okay now let us see what is an amplifier is okay an amplifier multiplies the input signal with some constant called as gain of the amplifier that is y of t is equal to 
k into x of t y of t is output of the amplifier x of t is input of the amplifier okay so the relation between input and output of the amplifier is given like this okay for example let me apply an input like this okay what is this kind of input signal it is a sinusoidal signal and of course only one cycle is considered here i hope you know how to represent this sinusoidal signal right vm sin omega t where vm is maximum value of the input signal so that is it is a positive peak vm and if i consider in the negative direction it is a minus vm okay if this kind of signal is applied to the amplifier then what is the expected output of the amplifier this is how the output of the amplifier is going to look like what is the difference between output and the input the output is looking like larger in magnitude otherwise the shape of the output and the input are same okay so if the shape of the output is not same as shape of the input then i'll say that there is a distortion in the output okay so my output is given by k times vm sin omega t as i told that my input is getting multiplied with some constant okay in order to give it as an output that is why i could see that k times vm times sin omega t so that my positive peak is now going to become k times vm earlier it is vm only now it is k times vm now my negative peak is going to become minus k times vm okay so what is an amplifier amplifier is a one which multiplies the input signal with some constant and in particular that constant may be called as gain of the amplifier okay right so that means the gain of the amplifier k is given as output signal by input signal right okay let us consider an example if x of t is 20 millivolts and k the gain of the amplifier is 100 then what is my output is given by output is given by 2 volts output is 100 times more than the input signal the process of multiplying the input signal with some constant is what is called as amplification okay and the process carried out by a device which is called as an amplifier okay so two important terms one is amplifier another is amplification okay amplifier is going to perform a process called the amplification and amplification means process of multiplying the input signal with some constant it is called as amplification okay now i have a question that can i call transformer as an amplifier okay because if i consider a step up transformer my secondary voltage is always greater than my primary voltage with appropriate turns ratio i can always ensure that my secondary voltage is greater than the primary voltage so can i call transformer as an amplifier no if you want to know the reason why i cannot call transformer as an amplifier you should know the exact definition of the amplifier so the exact definition of an amplifier is any circuit can be called as an amplifier only if power gain is greater than one okay so only if p out by p in is greater than one then only the circuit can be called as an amplifier in a transformer though secondary voltage is greater than the primary voltage but the input power and output power both are being same there is no power gain in a transformer transformer normally works with the principle of induction okay so any circuit if it is not providing a power gain you can never call it as an amplifier that may be giving a voltage gain maybe v out by v in may be greater than one okay but overall if p out by p in is not greater than one then you cannot call it as an amplifier okay so before we call any circuit as an amplifier what we need to check it is that whether power gain is greater than one or not okay so of course power gain means p is nothing but v into i so either by increasing the voltage or by increasing the current we will be making sure that power gain is greater than one right okay what are the characteristics of an amplifier there are two important characteristics of an amplifier one is gain as we have already seen the gain is the ratio between a magnitude of output and input signals there is another important characteristic of an amplifier that is bandwidth what is bandwidth the range of frequencies over which gain of the amplifier is constant okay what is the functionality we expect out of any amplifier in the public addressing system we have seen the amplifier 
what is the input to the amplifier let us say our voice signal whatever we are speaking through the microphone okay so that means our voice signal may consist of different frequency components okay if your amplifier is not treating all the frequency components equally well then it will not amplify all the frequency components that are there in your voice signal or input signal then at the end through the output of the speaker we voice is not very clear okay to the audience the voice is not very clear why because the amplifier has not amplified all the frequency components equally well so treating equally well all the frequency components that are there in the input signal is an essential requirement for an amplifier and in practice it will not happen so that is why for what range of frequencies your amplifier is providing the gain is what is being considered as bandwidth okay so this gain and bandwidth are important characteristics of an amplifier right okay test signals and signal generators assume that you have designed an amplifier amplifier is having input amplifier is having output okay suppose if you are asked to uh, give an output of the amplifier which is 100 times more than the input signal just like what the example we have seen assume that you have designed the amplifier now you want to test that whether your amplifier is giving the output which is 100 times more than the input signal what you will be doing you need to have some test signals okay you need to have some test signals what are these test signals these test signals can be either a sine waveform square waveform triangular waveform and so on okay these are normally generated from signal generators okay so our laboratories are normally equipped with these signal generators whose output is nothing but these test signals which are sine square triangular etc so i'll be using these test signals for uh, verifying whether my amplifier is working properly or not okay so i'll give the input to my amplifier as one of these signals and i'll try to observe my output of the amplifier and if it is uh, giving a proper output then i'll say that my amplifier is working good but for observing output what do we need is we need an oscilloscope so that if i can observe my output in the oscilloscope i can measure what is the output voltage of my output signal and i'll compare that what exactly it is to be given by the amplifier and what it is giving and i'll say that whether my amplifier is working good or not okay right course objectives this course intends to introduce some of the variety of circuits let me show you the important type of circuits that we are likely to learn in this particular course okay so one is linear wave shaping circuits non linear wave shaping circuits single stage amplifier circuits and multi stage amplifier circuits and lastly multi vibrator circuits these are the five varieties of circuits that we are likely to learn in this particular course okay let us come one by one in the first two circuits linear wave shaping circuits non linear wave shaping circuits from the name itself they are meant for shaping the input waveform okay so these circuits normally shape the input waveform to give a desired shape for the output signal okay for example you consider as either a sine waveform or a triangle waveform suppose you want to convert your sine waveform into like a triangle waveform wave shaping you want to change the shape of the input signal then we will be using this kind of wave shaping circuits for this requirement okay so in the linear wave shaping circuits we could see only the linear elements let us say r and c in this course we are confined to the circuits consisting of only r and c elements okay as r and c are linear we are calling the circuits as linear wave shaping circuits okay so in the non linear wave shaping circuits we will use a non linear element let us say diode okay but nevertheless they are wave shaping circuits meant for changing the shape of the input signal whatever that is applied to these kind of circuits okay the next one is single stage amplifier circuits so just now we have seen that what is a role of an amplifier is okay so we are learning the amplifier circuits which are single stage okay but we confined to the amplifier circuits built using bjt's only okay so we are going to learn about 
how amplifier circuit is going to look like how to design the amplifier circuit how to analyze an amplifier circuit okay which are constructed using bjt's and next one is a multi stage amplifier circuits as i mentioned that the characteristics of the amplifier are one is gain another is bandwidth if the gain provided by the amplifier circuit is not sufficient okay if it is not meeting the requirement then naturally we need to look for a technique for increasing the gain of the amplifier one such technique is cascading okay so cascading of two or more stages of amplifiers is what is called as a multi stage amplifier circuits so we will learn here this kind of circuits whose role is primarily to increase the gain of the amplifier okay and lastly there are multi vibrator circuits i told you that if uh, after once the amplifier has been designed we need to test its functionality and for testing we need to have some test signals okay so these are type of circuits which are going to generate these test signals what are test signals maybe sine waveform square waveform triangular waveform and so on okay so we will learn these kind of circuits like multi vibrator circuits which are normally going to generate these test signals okay right okay lastly we can summarize what we have learned in this class we have seen what is a system what is a system system consists of circuits of course circuit is an interconnection of devices but what kind of devices can be present in this system not only the electrical devices but also the non electrical and sometimes interface devices so system in general processes the input to give the desired output okay as a part of that we have seen uh, a public addressing system where we have seen what is an amplifier amplifier is going to multiply the input signal with some constant may be called as the gain of the amplifier and uh, the characteristics of the amplifier are gain and the bandwidth okay of course we have seen the course objectives and the course outcomes we have understood what varieties of circuits are being considered in this course and what are the course outcomes that means what is the skill set that is expected at the end of this course by the students that we have seen okay thank you everyone for listening uh, hope you all have understood what we discussed in today's class so see you next time